Okay, with both model and support loaded, the next thing I like to do before I do anything else is calibrate the machine. Now if we go down here to our tools and we press settings, this brings us to the calibration screen. Now, it says calibrated, they do calibrate it at the factory, but as I mentioned earlier, I like to recalibrate it just manually to make sure that the calibration is nice and tight, just to reduce any chance of problems because things uh, kind of shaking and shipping. We've got the option for automatic tip calibration or manual calibration. Now, anytime you take the head out of the machine to replace it, so for instance, if you went from an printing ABS to printing TPU or printing PLA, you need to replace the heads when you do that. When you go and put the head back in, you need to run the calibration. With PLA, you don't actually need to do uh, the XY calibration because you're only using one head. The other head is actually cooling nozzle, so there's no XY calibration in that case. But with ABS, ASA, or TPU in the 170 or 270, or with the 370, the other materials like um, PC ABS or um, ABS ESD7, you, you need to, um, anytime you're switching to those materials from TPU or PLA, you need to actually run the calibration. So the auto calibration is what you always do first. And that's actually gonna do it automatically as it says, but it's not as accurate as the manual. It's always a good place to start, but you always need to run the manual calibration at least once and sometimes multiple times, depending on how far out it is. So in our case, I'm pretty confident that it's been calibrated um, close enough because it was calibrated ahead of time, but I do like to run the manual calibration. So we're gonna press start and uh, it's gonna prompt us to start the part. And then from here, I can press start. Now it gives you the part placement option with the calibration, they don't want you to move it, so you can't move this. It's always gonna print right there. When you're printing other parts, you can move it wherever you want. So I'm gonna press print, and at this point, the machine's gonna take over and do its thing, and we'll take a look at it after it's done printing. calibration part just finished we see it says done on the screen I'm open the front door and I'll just tap the screen to uh, get it out of its sleep mode because I had walked away from the printer so we've got our calibration part printed here it says print successful this tray is very hot and it's asking is the tray ready for another job um, we're just gonna hit yes just to clear that screen and it pops over into this tip offset so we need to actually use our fingers to select the appropriate offset here. We've got Y1, X2, Y2, X1, and negative eight to positive eight on all sides. Now this is where printing in blue or a different color than white comes in, the hand, comes in handy because the support material is white and the, the base is blue. If both were white, it would be almost impossible to see what we're looking for. But what we actually have here are two dashed lines or, or two sets of dashed lines on the top and on the sides on each side of the white line. And that white line is gonna be coming either up or from one side at an angle. And we want to look for the area where it's best centered between the two dashed lines and therefore the corresponding number. So if we start from negative eight and we're gonna use the loop for this and we work our way down to positive eight, at some point between negative eight and positive eight, it should be centered between the dashed lines that are above and below the line. And at the point where we find it's best centered, so for example, if we just determine that's it right here, that corresponds with negative four. And we will then ultimately slide our finger up to, to, or down to negative four. We'll repeat that process for all four sides, and then we'll hit the apply button. A good resource for learning more about the calibration is support.stratasys.com. Once you're on the site, you can go to products, 3D printers, FDM platform, and move your cursor down to Stratasys F123 series. On this page, we'll scroll down until we find user's guides, and then we will scroll down to English and click the download button. Once this guide has downloaded, we can open it, and we'll scroll down to the table of contents, and under 
Section 6, Calibrations and Adjustments, we can select Manual Tip Calibration. You can read through this entire section, but in this particular part we're discussing right now, we're looking at the finding the, the best centered point for the support toolpath between the two dash marks on each side of it. So in this example here, we're looking at X1, and the red line is simulating what you'll see for the support toolpath, which in which will be printed in a white color. Your dash lines will be the color of whatever model material you've chosen. So in the case of this video, it's blue. And we want to find where this support toolpath is best centered between the two dash marks. In this case, it's best centered at zero. So for X1, in this case, we would select zero on, on the printer screen. And then we would continue around to y1, Y2, X2, and Y1, and do the same process. Look between negative 8 and positive 8 and find where it's best centered. And in this example, all of them are centered at zero. If we go down to the next page, however, it's showing an example where it's not centered at zero. In this case, if we start at, for X1, start at 8, and we work our way down, we see that it is best centered at 4. So for X1 in this example, we would enter 4. Again, we would do the same thing going around the rest of them, and on the rest of these examples, they are still best centered at zero. So I'm going to get the loop out right now and do that. So the loop comes with a little piece in here for taking measurements. Really not needed for what we use it for, so I like to take that out just because it can cloud your vision. So you just get these in there and you can just pop that piece right out and you can save it in case you want to use it later. And uh, we don't need this anymore so I'll toss that out. So again I've got my loop and I'm going to start at negative eight. Now it helps to have some good lighting in the room because it is difficult to see. Your head tends to block it so if light's coming from an angle that can help. So I'm going to look down and I have some good light coming from this direction and I can see at negative eight we're touching the top line so that's not it. And as I slide my loop down, I can see about, it, it really looks best centered about positive two. So I'll slide this up to positive two. Now one tip, this USB port does accept a USB mouse. It is, especially if you have bigger fingers, difficult to slide this and get it right. You can't really see where you're going, so it can be a little bit frustrating plug a mouse in you can click and control that like you'd expect to be able to do with, with a mouse so I've got that at positive 2 I'll continue on on the left hand side where it's Y2 and I'm touching the left side of the set of lines with negative 8 so I'll go down and it looks to be centered best centered about negative 1 so I'm going to put that right between right there. Same thing with Y1. Again, it looks to be best centered at positive one. And then X2. This looks to be best centered at positive four. I'm gonna go over here. So we've entered our values into Excel here for X1, X2, Y1, and Y2. And the delta X and delta Y are just simply X1 plus X2 divided by two and Y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So of course I created a little formula up here for both of these and ultimately we have 0 0.003 for delta x and 0 for delta y. Now if we refer back to our user's guide and again if you're looking at these values they're being calculated for you. You don't need to create an excel sheet for it but if you want to understand a little better I've done that and it's telling you right here in the user's guide that, that 4 equals 0 0.004 so it's thousandths of an inch. If we go down a little bit further, 
then it does tell you that if the delta x and delta y values are both within the range of negative 0.002 to positive 0.002, then the printer is calibrated and you don't need to adjust it further. Now you do need to enter these in still, but what it's saying is after you've entered them, you don't need to run the calibration again. If they're outside of these ranges, then you need to run the manual calibration again until they fall within that range. So in our case, we have a, a delta x that's outside of the range. That means we're gonna enter these values in and accept them, but we need to run the calibration again and then we'll record these values and check our delta x and y to make sure that they're within spec. Now the last thing we need to do is our, our z. And the way we do that is with some calipers and we actually need to peel the this layer off of the top layer of blue. So again, it, it, it's very helpful. Typically in the top right corner, it's the easiest to peel it off because there's an extra little blob there. So I was able to get it. Now. If I can peel this off all in one piece, that's generally a good sign. If it, well, not always, but if it's really difficult to peel it off, sometimes the, the Z calibration is too far down, so it's, it's kind of pressing it. But this came off in one piece. This could actually indicate that it's too far up because it's not sticking it well enough, but this felt pretty good. There's no way to, to do it by feel though. You, you really need to measure this with calipers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take readings on all four sides, one, two, three, and four, and we'll average those together. And at that point, we'll make the adjustment using these buttons here. So this should be 10 thousandths of an inch thick in all four center points. And if it's more than that or less than that, we need to make an adjustment on the screen. So um, it's giving us a, a slice height right here of 10 thousandths of an inch. And if I, for instance, got 10.5, 10.5, 9.5, 9.5, that would average out to 10, I wouldn't make an adjustment. But if I got 11, 11, 10, 10, well now I'm gonna average out to 10.5. So we would then bump this up to 10.5, and that's gonna be our, and then we would apply it at that point. Back in our user's guide here, we can scroll down until we get to the Z offset section. Now notice this note here, the Z offset adjustment's not needed when using TPU. So if you are calibrating the TPU head, you don't do the Z offset, just the XY. But all the other materials, you're gonna need to do the Z offset. So uh, we peel the material off and Again, like I discussed in the video, we measure it on all four sides. Sometimes I'll actually take multiple measurements on each side and take that average and then average all those averages together to get the average thickness around the entire square. But it's up to you. You get a feel for it as you're taking your measurements. And we need to be within plus or minus five ten thousandths of an inch away from the slice height of ten thousandths of an inch in order to be within spec. If we're outside of that range, we need to enter the value that we got and then run the calibration again. So I created a little calculator here to run a couple different scenarios. So say we get 0 0.010 for side one, 0 0.012 for side two, 0 0.012 for side three, and 0 0.009 for side four. Those averaging together get me outside of the spec here slightly so we would need to enter this value into the screen and then run our calibration again and if we're outside of spec for either x y or z we need to run the entire calibration again and take all the measurements again because even if you've entered the x y values in once they're probably going to be slightly different the next time you run it so you need to run everything again not just the one that's outside of spec so again a couple other scenarios here we could say zero point 0 0.010, 0 0.011, 0 0.011, and 0 0.010. That would be within spec. We don't need to run the calibration again. So you can see there's a couple of different scenarios you can where you'd be in or outside of spec. And depending on where you end up, you need to either run the manual calibration again or just enter the value and you're able to start printing. After I make the adjustments here, I would hit apply. So I would hit apply and then close. And now we're back out to the front screen. Now, because my Delta X is outside of spec, I need to repeat this process again. So you'll just basically repeat the entire process, do everything over again, take all your measurements again until all three Delta X, Delta Y, and the average Z are within spec. At that point, you're done your calibration and you're ready to print.